Hi, today we're going to be learning about constructing lines and angles. First, let's take a look at the instruments that you're going to need for constructions. So first we've got our compass and obviously a pencil that is attached to it. The compass is useful not only for drawing circles, but also for making sure that you are working accurately, that you have accurate measurements. And when you're using the compass, there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of. First, make sure that your compass, the hinge is tight. If necessary, you can use a screwdriver to tighten it because if it is too loose, it will slip and then you might end up with it slipping while you're busy using it, in which case you're going to lose the accuracy that the compass helps you to get. Okay, so that's the one thing. Then the other thing is also when you're working with the compass, make sure that your pencil is nice and sharp as well. So that's the compass. The next thing is our protractor. Now you get different types of protractors. You get, this is an example of a 180 degree protractor. You also get bigger 360 degree protractors. The one I'm going to be using is this one over here. Okay. Now the protractor, this allows you to measure angles and also to construct diagrams that have specific size angles. When you are using it, again, there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of. First, this is the origin, it's the center of our protractor, and this point over here is where you need to, what you need to place on the angle that you're working with, on the corner or the vertex of the angle that you're working with, that you're trying to measure. And then you're going to place your zero line, which is this one, or that one over there, depending on which way you're wanting to measure your angle. The zero line must be placed directly on top of one of the arms of the angle. And then when you're measuring, make sure that you measure from zero. Don't measure from 180 degrees. You can see over here, there are two lines of measurements. In, on this protractor, on the outside, I've got zero to 180 going in that direction and zero to 180 going in this direction on the inside. Okay, so you need to make sure that you are working with the correct measurements that uh, while you are doing your measuring. So you always work from zero and you measure in the direction towards the other arm of the angle. Okay, so that's your protractor. And then we've got our ruler, which we're going to be using as well. You need to make sure that you have your ruler. That is obviously useful for drawing straight lines and for measuring. And then we've got our pencil and our eraser, which obviously are going to be useful tools as well. We don't want to only be working with a pencil that's attached to our compass, so it's useful to have a second pencil as well. If you don't have these things available right now, pause the video and go and get them, and then we'll continue. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do before we start actually constructing anything is we need to talk quickly about what angles are. So an angle is where you have two straight lines that are intersecting. So over here, I've got two straight lines and they are meeting at this point over here. This is what we call the vertex of the angle, okay, or the point of intersection. That is where they are crossing over or meeting each other. This space inside here is the angle. That over there is the amount of turn or the space between the two arms of the angle or the two rays that make up that angle. Okay, so that is what we're talking about when we are referring to an angle. Now we get different types of angles and um, they are named based on their sizes. So let's quickly go through the different angles that you get. So the first one is the acute angle. An easy way to remember what the acute angle is, if you think of the word cute, you often refer to a baby as being cute and a baby is small. An acute angle is a small angle, okay? So it would look something like this. So like that, and then the angle would be measured inside here. And an acute angle is anything between zero and 90 degrees. So that is what an acute angle is. The next type of angle we get is a right angle. Okay, so a right angle is like this. It's like the corner of a square or the corner of a rectangle or the corner of your page that you're busy working on. 
Okay, this is a right angle. This is exactly 90 degrees. It's a quarter of a circle. Okay, a full circle is 360 degrees and a quarter of that is 90 degrees. Now, this is often indicated like this. So when you see a little square that's been drawn inside an angle, what that is telling you is that that angle is exactly 90 degrees. It is a right angle. Okay, the next one we have is our obtuse angle. An obtuse angle looks like this, or something like this, because there's obviously more than one. So that's an example of an, of an obtuse angle. And an obtuse angle is an angle that is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, then the next kind of angle we have is the straight angle. Now a straight angle is an angle that is on a straight line. Okay, so if we have a straight line drawn like this, and that is where our angle, that's the point that we're talking about, the angle that's around, then this angle over here is 180 degrees. So a straight angle is exactly 180 degrees. Okay, then the next kind of angle we get is a reflex angle. Now for this one, I'm actually going to draw two examples of a reflex angle because the reflex angle has got a wider range than the acute and the obtuse angles do. Um, a reflex angle can be anything from 180 to 360. So it can look something like this. That's an example of a reflex angle. Or you could also have an angle that looks something like this. That is also an example of a reflex angle. So a reflex angle has a wide range of options. That is anything between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay, and then the last one is the revolution. And the revolution is a full circle around a point. So if I've got a point on the end of a, a line segment like this, then the angle that goes all the way around from here back to where it started is 360 degrees and that is a revolution okay so those are the different types of angles that we can get so if i do refer to an angle by a name like that that is what i'm talking about but now we're going to go on to our constructions okay so the first type of construction we're going to learn how to do is bisecting a line segment so over here i've got a line segment a b and i've been told to bisect this line segment okay so now when you're bisecting a line segment you're not going to be using any fancy equipment, you're just going to be using a ruler for this one and your pencil. Okay, so first of all, when you're bisecting a line segment, you need to know what bisecting means. Okay, so bisecting in geometry means cutting exactly in half so that you have two identical pieces. Okay, so when I'm bisecting this line segment, I need to make sure that I'm cutting this line exactly in half. So first I need to make sure that I know how long it is. So I'm going to use my ruler, I'm going to measure it up nice or um, line it up nicely and I'm going to measure the length of this line segment. Okay, so from A to B, that is 9.6 centimeters. Now what I need to do is I need to divide that in half. So 9.6 divided by 2 is going to be 4.8 and then I need to make a mark at 4.8 with my ruler with my pencil. 
Okay, now obviously when you are doing it, you're able to get right on top. It's always best to be looking directly down while you are working so that you can make sure that you are doing it accurately. Okay, I'm looking at an angle because I can't get right directly on top of it. So for you, it's always best to work directly looking straight down at it. Okay, so you mark off the point. This is what we could call the midpoint. It is the middle point of that line. Okay, and then once you've marked your midpoint, you can then go and draw a line segment that cuts through that midpoint. And that line segment is bisecting AB. So that is what we've been asked to do for that example, is to bisect the line segment. Okay, the next type of construction we're going to do is drawing a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. Okay, so again, here you've got a line segment. It is the line AB. Now, again, there's something you need to know before we can do that, this, and that is what perpendicular means. Perpendicular means at right angles, so exactly 90 degrees. So to work this out or to do this construction, what we need to do is we need to, first of all, we need to have the, the midpoint, okay? But the midpoint, the, the method we used to find the midpoint over here did, would not help us to get a perfect 90 degree angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using our compass for this and we're going to be using our pencil, obviously. OK, so to do this, what we do is we take our compass and we open it up. OK, now the distance from there to there is what we call the radius, because if I were to draw a circle with my compass, then that would be the this would be the center of the circle and that would be the outside of the circle so the radius is from the center to the outside so this is what we call the radius over here so when i when i refer to the radius that's what i mean i mean how far i've opened my compass okay now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our radius is more than half of the length of a b and that's important if it's not wide enough you're not going to be able to do this okay and you'll see why so we open it up so that the compass is more than half the length of AB, the radius, and then we put our the needle of our compass on point A, like that, okay? And once we've done that, we then are going to draw an arc above AB like this, and another arc below AB like that, okay? Note, I haven't, I didn't move the point, I didn't move the compass, and I didn't change the size of the compass either. Then, without changing it, this is where the accuracy of having a compass that is tight helps. Now, I can have the exact same distance when I put this on this side over here, on the B, I can now draw another arc this way, and another arc this way to cross through the ones that I just did, okay? The reason I've done that is now I've got a point of intersection over here, and I've got a point of intersection over here, which are going to be exactly the same distance from A to there and from B to there, and from A to there and from B to there, because they are the distance of this, the radius of this compass. Okay, so when I now take my pencil and my ruler, I can do this. I can take this point over here and this point over here and I can join them up. And when I do that, I now have a 90 degree angle over there and we can check it. So first I'm going to check that this is properly bisected. So over here, this line is 11 centimeters long and you can see that my line that I've just drawn is cutting right through at 5.5 centimeters. That is exactly half of 11. Okay, then also we can take a protractor and we can check that our angle is actually 90 degrees. So if I put this on here, I put the origin at the point where those lines are intersecting. You can see over here that this is right there at 90 degrees. Okay, my zero line is on AB and that is on 90 degrees over there. So I can check once I have done my construction, I can check that I did it properly. So that's how you do a, that's how you draw a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. Okay, the next one that we're going to do 
is drawing a perpendicular line at a given point. So in this case over here, we were given a line segment and we were told to do a bisector. So we were told it has to be at the midpoint of that line. But now in this example over here, you've been given a line segment and you need to draw a perpendicular line at this point over here, not the midpoint, just whatever point that they give you. Okay, so I've got this point over here, it's the point P and I need to draw a perpendicular line at that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the similar concept to what I did in the previous one, except I have to kind of make my own line segment out of it. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protractor, put it on point P, and I'm going to make this shorter than the shorter side of this line. Okay, so this side of the line is longer, that side is shorter, so I'm going to make sure that this is shorter than that. And I'm going to draw an arc over there, and I need to draw an arc on this side over here. See, I did not change the size of my protractor, so that means that it is exactly the same distance from P to there as it is from P to there. Okay, so now this is the midpoint. P is now the midpoint of those two points over there, of the, of the line segment between those two points over there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use these as though they were like the A and B in this example that we had over here. So exactly what I did for this example, I can now do over here using these as though they were my A and B points. So what I'm going to do is again, I put this on here, but I need to make sure that this is wider than half of that distance. So I need to write, open it up a little bit. Okay. And now I'm going to put this, I can call these points over here if I want to, I'm, I'll call this A and this B, just so I can refer to them by a name while I'm talking to you about it. You don't have to do that labeling. It just helps to, for me to be able to refer to two things to be able to talk to you about it. Okay, so I'm going to now put this on what I have called point A, which is the point where that arc intersected with the, the line, okay? And then I'm going to draw an arc over there above, again, just like I did in the previous one, and another arc below. And then I'm going to do the same thing, not changing the size of my protractor. I put it on point B over here, and I'm going to go over here and draw so it intersects over there and over here. And now I've got, just like I had in the previous example, a point up here where it's intersecting and a point down here where it's intersecting. And now I can join those two points. So if I draw that, there's my one point, that is my other point. I'm going to join those two points up with my ruler. And you can see that it's going exactly through the P. Now we could actually have even not done the bottom one. We could have just done above the line over here because I have the P that it can intersect with. But it doesn't matter if we do the top and the bottom, you'll still get the same result. So now I'm going to draw my, perp or my perpendicular line over there at the point P. And now we can check it. You can see over here, if I check that this is in fact 90 degrees, I can put that on there and you can see that that is, if that's on the zero, if the origin is on P, then this is 90 degrees over there. Okay. Now, like I said, when we were doing this one, we didn't actually have to do this bottom, these bottom arcs. We could have just done the top ones because we had a point to join it up with already. In this example, we had to do the bottom arcs because we didn't have a point to work with over here. We found the point when we did that line. That's how we discovered that this was the midpoint. But over here, we already had a point. So I could have just done the top ones or I could have just done the bottom ones and joined to the P like that. Okay, so that is drawing a perpendicular line at a given point. The next one we're going to do is drawing a perpendicular line from a given point. Now this is different. In this example, the given point was on the line that we had to have a perpendicular line drawn to. Over here, in this example, we are going to have a line over here and then somewhere off that line, we are given a point and we are told we have to draw a perpendicular line from that point so that it crosses this line at 90 degrees. That is the whole purpose of drawing the perpendicular line. Okay, 
So what we're going to do is we are going to start off by taking our protractor and it doesn't really matter what size it is so long as it is wider or further than the distance to the line. Okay. And I put my protractor on point P, the needle must go on point P. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to draw a line or an arc through the line on the one side of P and through the line on the other side of P like that. Okay. So now I've got two points that I'm going to be working with this and this, these are going to now act similar to how these two points did over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these A and B. You don't, again, you don't have to do that. I'm just doing it so that I can refer to them a little bit more easily. Okay. So I've got A and B over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protractor and do exactly the same thing as we were doing in all the other examples. I'm going to put my protractor on A and now I don't need to do it up here because I've already got a point up there. But what I'm going to do is underneath, I'm going to go and draw my arcs like this and from B the same thing. So I'm going to just put that on there and then draw my arc like that. And now I'm going to go and join up the point P with that point over there. Okay, and now if I go and join that up, now you can see if I go and check this, the size over here, that that is exactly 90 degrees. So this is a perpendicular line which I've now drawn from the point P. So when you're given a point that is not on the line, you just ex exactly the same as you did over here in this example, we took the point P and we used our compass to make a mark the exact same distance on both sides of P on the line. Same thing as what we're doing over here, but this time the P is not on the line. So when I do this, it's just going, the arcs are going to look a little bit different, but it's still the same thing that I'm doing. And then just like I did in the previous example, I used those two points where those arcs intersected that line and those are my starting points for doing arcs on the other side that will intersect, which I can then join up over here with P. Okay, and that gives us our perpendicular line from a point. Okay, so now we've learned how to draw a, how to bisect a line or a line segment. We've learned how to draw a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. We've also learned how to draw a perpendicular line at a point and how to draw a perpendicular line from a point. Now we're going to go and we're going to learn how to do some angles, how to draw some angles. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is bisecting an angle. So over here, I have got an angle that's been drawn for me. And I need to bisect this angle. Remember, bisect means cut in half exactly. So I need to draw a line somewhere in the middle here, but it must be exactly in the middle, so that the two angles that are formed are exactly half of the one that I've got. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to again take my protractor, my compass, and I'm going to put it on point P, which is the vertex of the angle. Okay, now it doesn't really matter what size I'm starting with. Okay, this it's not like the other ones where I had to make sure it was more than half or slightly longer or whatever. Just make it a slightly Make it a size that you can actually work with. Don't make it too small. The smaller you're working, the less accurate you're going to be. The bigger you're working, the more accurate you'll be. Okay, so I'm going to have it at about this size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my point or my needle on P. And I'm going to draw an arc through both arms or through each arm of this angle. Not changing the size of my compass, of my the radius of my compass. Okay, so now I've got an arc over there. I've got an arc over there. Now, what I'm going to do is I will just label those A and B again, not really necessary. You don't have to do this. It's just so that I can refer to them. So what I'm going to do is I can change the size of the compass now if I want to, but I don't need to. So long as I keep it consistent for both of those and I keep it consistent for what I'm going to do now, um, it's fine. 
So now I'm going to put my compass on the point where this arc intersected. So that's point A. And I'm going to draw an arc in the middle of my angle through here. Okay. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing without changing the size of my compass by putting it on B. And drawing an arc so it intersects with the one that I just did. So now I've got a point over here where they are intersecting. This is the point I'm going to be using now to bisect my angle. So now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to join P, which is the vertex of my angle, with that point where the two arcs bisected each other. And that line over there now should bisect this angle exactly. So now let's go and check. Okay, so if I put this on here, let's first see how big the original angle was. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's a really nice angle size. Okay, it looks like it's about 63.5. Okay, so then this one over here should be half of that. So this is sitting at 31.5. So yeah, about 63 and then 31.5. So that is half of that angle. So that's how you bisect an angle. You take your compass, you put it on the, the vertex of the angle and you draw an arc on through both of the arms then you take your compass and you put it on each of the points of intersection where those arcs intersect with the arms and you draw an arc from each of them inside the angle so that those two arcs will intersect with each other and then you join your vertex with that point of intersection and that will bisect your angle for you okay so that's how you bisect an angle then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a 45 degree angle okay now, this is what we call a special angle. You're going to be using special angles a lot more later on when you're doing trigonometry and stuff. But for now, let's just learn how to draw these special angles. So we're going to be learning to draw a 45 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 30 degree angle. So the first one is our 45 degree angle. Now, what's important for you to realize is that 45 is half of 90. So if you can draw a 90 degree angle, then you can draw a 45 degree angle because we know now how to bisect an angle, which is to cut it in half. So if I have a 90 degree angle, I can do the same thing that I did over here to bisect it and it will give me a 45 degree angle. So first I need to have a 90 degree angle. So that's going to be our first thing we're going to do over here is we're going to draw a 90 degree angle using what we learned when we were learning to do a perpendicular from a point because if I draw a perpendicular that will give me a 90 degree angle because remember perpendicular means at 90 degrees or at right angles. So over here I'm going to take my compass put it on P and I'm going to draw an arc on either side of P going through that line and keeping my compass a consistent size for both arcs over here and over there. Okay, so now I've got P and then I've got over here an arc, which I'm going to label the point of intersection A. And over here I've got an arc where I'm going to label the point of intersection B. Okay, then once I've done that, I'm going to take my compass and put it on A. But now if I try and draw my arc now, I'm going to have a problem because they're going to go through P over there, which isn't what I want. I want it to be slightly bigger than that. So I'm going to open my compass a little bit so that I can have my arcs intersecting each other. So I'm going to put my compass on A over there, and then I'm going to draw my arc above the line over here. Now I could do one below the line as well, but I don't need to because I've already got point P, which I'm going to join up with. Then I'm going to put my compass on B over here as well, and do the exact same thing so that it will intersect with this arc over here. So now I've got my point of intersection, which is this point over there. Okay, so now once I've done that, I'm going to go and join these up. Okay, now when I do this, I'm going to make sure that I draw this relatively long so that I will be able to do the next step, which is to bisect it. So I need to have a lot long enough lines to work with. Okay, so now I know that this over here should be 90 degrees. So let's just check it quickly. Over here I've got a 90 degree angle over there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my 
bisecting because that will allow me to draw a 45 degree angle which is my goal here i want to draw a 45 degree angle and 45 is half of 90 so now that i've got a 90 degree angle if i bisect it i will end up with a 45 degree angle okay so what i'm going to do now is like we did in the previous example over here remember we started at our vertex so our vertex now is called p as well like it was in this example over here i'm going to use my compass i'm going to draw arcs on either of those or both of those arms over there okay so over here i'm going to take my compass i'm going to put it on point p and i'm going to draw an arc on that arm over there and i'm going to draw an arc on this arm over here okay now i'll call these points over here c and d just so that i have something to call them so i can refer to them and now i'm going to take my compass again I'm going to put it on point C and I'm going to draw a, an arc inside this angle, this 90 degree angle. Sorry, I'm shifting the page here, like that. And then I'm going to draw another one from D also inside this angle and it's just, I just did it long enough over there. Okay, so they are intersecting at that point over there. And now I can take my ruler and I can join that up with the point P. And now if I take my protractor and I measure this, you'll see that that is 45 degrees over there. Okay. Like that. So that's how you draw a 45 degree angle. Now let's have a look at a 60 degree angle. Okay, so to draw a 60 degree angle, we're going to start off, we've got a line segment over here that we're going to be drawing on, like that. Okay, so first of all, when I have to draw a 60 degree angle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protractor, I'm going to make, make it a little bit bigger for this one, so I have a slightly bigger size to work with, and I'm going to put my protractor on point A, which is one end of my line segment, okay, like this, and then I'm going. To, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protractor and I'm going to draw an arc that crosses over that line and I'm going to carry on going quite far up like that. Okay, so here I've got quite a long or quite a big arc that I'm drawing. Okay, once I've done that, keeping my protractor exactly the same size, I'm now going to put my protractor on this point where the arc intersected with the line. Okay, and then I'm going to go and draw another arc so it crosses over the arc that I just drew. That over there is the point that I'm going to be working with. This point of intersection, I'm now going to join with point A. Like that. Okay, so let's just go and measure that because that should be 60 degrees now. So if I put my protractor here and I measure that, you'll see that that is exactly 60 degrees. So when you want to draw a 60 degree angle, you take your compass, you put it on one end of the line segment where you want to do the angle, and then you draw an arc going through the line segment and quite far up as well. Okay, you just carry on drawing, drawing, drawing until you get quite far up. Then once you've done that, you take the, protract the compass without changing the, the radius, and you put it in the point where that arc intersected the line segment, and then you draw another small arc just to cross over, intersect with the arc you just drew. And then that point of intersection is where you are going to join with point A so that you can get your 60 degree angle. Okay, so that's how we draw a 60 degree angle. Now we're going to go and learn to draw a 30 degree angle. Now, just like for the 45 degree angle, the 30 degree angle is going to be using the concept that I can 
bisect an angle to get the 30 degree angle. So 30 is half of 60. So if I know now how to draw a 60 degree angle, 60 degree angle, I will now be able to draw a 30 degree angle as well. And that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so now we're drawing a 30 degree angle. And this is the last one that we're going to be doing for today. So first, just like I did for the 60 degree angle, I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to put it on point A. And I'm going to draw my arc around like that so that it crosses over my line and goes quite far up like that. Okay, then I'm going to take it without changing the size. I'm going to put it on the point over here, the point of intersection. I'm going to draw another small arc just to cross over that so I can get my point of intersection of the two arcs over here. Then I take that point and I'm going to join that up with the origin or with the point A rather, sorry. Okay, and that's going to give me the vertex of my 60 degree angle like that. Okay, so once I've done that, so now this should be 60 degrees, let's just check it. Okay, so over here I use my compass, I can, or my protractor, and I can check over there, that is 60 degrees. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I need to get a 30 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bisect this angle. Okay, now we've already learned how to bisect an angle. To bisect an angle, we need to go and use our protractor, our compass, and I'm going to make it slightly smaller just so you can see the difference between what I'm doing over here. And I'm going to put that on point A. I'm going to draw an arc through each arm of this angle over here. Okay, now that I've got those two points, I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to put them, put it first on this point over here and draw an arc inside. And then I'm going to put it on this point over here. Doesn't matter which one I do first and which one I do second, it'll come to the same thing. And I'm going to draw another arc so that it intersects with the one I just drew, like that. And now I've got a point of intersection over here that I can now join with my point A. So that is what I'm going to be joining over there. Like that. Okay, so now if we go and use the protractor, we can measure and check if that is a 30 degree angle. And if you measure that, you should find that that is exactly 30 degrees over there. And that is how you draw a 30 degree angle. So today we have learned how to bisect a line segment. We have learned how to draw a perpendicular bisector for a line segment. We've also learned how to draw a perpendicular line at a point. We've learned how to draw a perpendicular line from a point. Then for angles, we've learned how to bisect an angle. Then we've also learned how to draw a 45 degree angle by bisecting a 90 degree angle, which we got by drawing a perpendicular line at a point. And then we also learned how to draw a 60 degree angle and then a 30 degree angle that we got by bisecting a 60 degree angle. And that is how you construct lines and angles. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.